Hi, I'm Todd Barron of the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, and I'm here today to do an author interview for GI Endoscopy, and I'm here with Heiko Pohl, who is from White River Junction, VA, uh, who is going to discuss with us his paper, Association Between Adenoma Location and Risk of Recurrence. So, welcome. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, why, what led you to think that this was something that you wanted to study? So, um, you, you know about the interval cancers? Of course. And uh, I couldn't really believe uh, that uh, our efforts to reduce cancer risk is not as great in the proximal colon. So one of the uh, questions was, is there something different in the proximal colon compared to the distal colon? And so um, one idea to study, is, to study it is to, to see whether there's any difference in risk of recurrence of adenomas of those that have proximal adenomas at baseline compared to distal adenomas at baseline. So trying to understand a little bit whether the natural history is different between proximal and distal and whether that somehow can help us to understand whether there's something different in terms of risk of recurrence for colon cancer right. in the future. So the idea would be if a patient had a resection endoscopically of a large adenoma in the right colon, are they more likely to get a recurrence or residual compared to somebody, for example, had a resection in the left colon? Correct. Got it. Exactly right. Okay. Yes. All right. And so how did you uh, do the study? So um, I was lucky enough to have access to um, uh, patients from three pile prevention trials um, mm -hmm. that were headed by um, uh, John Barron. Um, those three trials were conducted between uh, the early 80s, actually 1985, and the last one completed in uh, 1998, and they, they were the antioxidant trial, um, the um, calcium trial, and the aspirin folate trial, and uh, published in the Journal of Medicine. Mm -hmm. And so together those trials uh, included uh, a little more than 2,400 patients, and they were followed over three and four years. Uh, and all of those uh, subjects that were enrolled in those studies had adenomas at baseline. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of a difference because back then in the 80s, in the early 90s, um, a clearing colonoscopy was required. So after the first year, they had to have another colonoscopy to make sure all adenomas or all polyps were found. So in those two trials, we combined those findings into the baseline as a baseline mm -hmm. exam uh, information. And the, the last one, the aspirin trial, uh, they had only one baseline exam and then three-year follow-up. Mm -hmm. And the other two also had the three-year follow-up after, after the, the, the first-year clearing exam. Okay. So this was our cohort that we followed. Right. And you're, you found? So um, we found that, that there is an increased risk of recurrence of adenomas if you have proximal adenomas at baseline. Um, the risk was not really great. It was uh, the risk ratio was 1.17, mm -hmm. so 17% increased risk. You could translate that, so it's not that great. So, um, and there was actually there were a couple of prior studies that looked at something similar. Uh, the largest one was the Martinez study that actually looked at nine at the eight power prevention trials, and our three trials were part of it. But they looked at any adenoma in the proximal colon. So. You know, patients have adenomas in the proximal and distal colon, so if you have any, then they looked at the recurrence. So we really wanted to, to tease out proximal and distal, and so we looked at those with only proximal and what their risk was mm -hmm. in the future. And our risk ratio, so our risk for the future was a little less. Theirs was like 1.6 or so, ours was 1.17, so not that great. Then um, you might argue, well, some people may have two adenomas, so is there any difference or more, so mm -hmm. multiplicity. So, so we lo then looked at those patients that had two adenomas or more on one side or the other, and, and we found the same kind of increase in risk in the future, a little more like 1.2 or so um, for uh, future adenomas. But what we really wanted to understand was, is there a difference? So let's say you have a group of patients that has right-sided adenomas, proximal adenomas, and a group of patients that has left-sided distal adenomas. Is there a difference in the strength of recurrence mm -hmm. on either side? And so we, we had a way, kind of gives you a little headache, but we had a way of comparing this. And so the strength of same-side recurrence is bigger than of same, on the proximal colon, is bigger than of same-site recurrence in distal colon, and the uh, risk ratio is 1.45, so that's a little stronger. So in other words, if you had a right-sided colon, again, you're more likely to get another 
second polyp in the right colon rather than get one in the distal colon. Exactly right. Okay. So and that uh, that so that was strong on the, on the distal colon. And so, and so let, let me interrupt. So it, if somebody did the follow up colonoscopy, how did they know what was a recurrent polyp at the site of prior resection versus number one a de novo polyp or even that that was a missed polyp on the first go round? We, we we don't know that, right? We have n no idea about this and. Uh, and so we cannot really, this is a speculation, right. so um, studies on incomplete resection, the one study has not found a difference in the, in, in the risk of, um, of incomplete resection right versus left uh, side, the CARE study. Um, and uh, studies have also, although there is some tendency to have a higher miss rate on the right, more for flat polyps um, than on the left, it's not, the jury is not quite out there, is my understanding, that there's a higher risk of missing something on the right if it's not just serrated polyps. Right. Yeah. So, so, and that's a good explanation. So, so the, the, the risk ratio that we found could also be explained by missing more on the right. Mm. So it's hard to tease that out, and, um, uh, and, and that's, we right. comment on this on limitation. Okay. So, so if, this, if these findings are borne out by larger and larger studies, could you foresee that our guidelines would actually change if somebody has a right polyp versus a left polyp? Or um, in, in in theory, yes. So you know, putting it into prediction models. But and I think so. If it really turns out to be the case that there's a biological difference in terms of recurrence, mm -hmm. I, I think it would be good to put it in. But but again, the strength of the association is not as great, and may overall other factors maybe may. Be, may may be much more important right. uh, than, than this right. difference. So do you have uh, uh, thoughts about subsequent study or how to follow this up? Or So um, it's difficult to study. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think um, it's important to understand in general to f tease out what is a contributor to post colonoscopy cancers. De novo incomplete resection at MIST and trying to um, find other ways of teasing that out in terms mm -hmm. of, for instance, incomplete resection. Right. Um, so. Okay. Well, finally, do anything the patient that you would tell or do anything different today with your patients with the data or, again, too early to tell? Yeah, I think it's too early to tell. I think, I think there was a, this was a nice uh, or interesting way of trying to understand is there a difference in, in the biology. Right. And, and we found a small difference, right. and there's a competing possible other explanation, right. but I think it was an interesting right. try, way to understand right. it. Great. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us. Sure.